our dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is the 25th episode in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role-playing. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be the last video where we, uh, in our epic, where we uh, set up, configure, install, and test Devise, which we're using for user authentication and sign up and all that stuff. Uh, we have one uh, set of features left to test that we're going to take a look at in this episode. Um, look at back on the previous videos for a review of what we've done so far. And then uh, in the retrospective that we have coming up, I'll do a more detailed review of the Epic. Uh, but hopefully we'll get the user locking and unlocking that will um, also... We've been working on error handling all along, so that would put both of these subtasks to bed, uh, and then we'd be able to close this. Um, one thing I will look at before opening the pull request and merging it is just to update, make sure that we have our code adequately commented, which hopefully we'll do after we um, get the functionality for this done um and again we're not going to watch me type out the comments and stuff like that i'll just kind of provide an overview of what i did at the end of this um i'll probably make those um two separate commits so we'll do this feature and then we'll do the commenting and then hopefully by the end of this episode we will have uh merged our epic branch for all this device stuff back into main uh and then we'll be able to look at our retrospective so uh we will now go in and demonstrate what we're doing with user locking and unlocking. So just to review, we have our in our um, device configuration, we do have um, locking set up. So we have um, unlock strategy. So lock strategy failed attempts. So if you fail too many attempts, which we have configured to 10 here as the maximum attempts. And then you need um, email um, or time to unlock your user. And we have um, a one hour uh, unlock on that. So if you exceed the number of failed attempts, your account is locked for an hour. And then um, after that, you would either need to set a um, reset your password or um, you would be able to log in again if you just fat fingered your password 10 times in a row or whatever so we will uh, start working on this so we're going to try to demonstrate this and um, I'm going to make this a bit artificial so let's take a look at the the Rails console here. And equals. So this is our user. We will do. failed attempts zero. So uh, since we've got our failed attempts set to 10, uh, what we'll do is we'll set it to eight or we'll set it to seven. So the original, like you've got your, um, you failed to log in and then the second time we'll do it, it will warn you they're going to get locked the next time. And then um, the third time it will fail because you're locked. So We'll do user dot update seven. So now when we go in and try to log in as this user, uh, the first time we do this, it'll just say that it's incorrect, invalid email or password, which we've done before in our login test on the uh, unhappy path tests for that 
and then do it again. This time it should warn us that if you um, get into the situation, we're going to lock you out. You have one more attempt before the account is locked. And now we will enter an incorrect password yet again and hit login and it should say your account is locked. And even if you sign in now using the correct password of that user, it'll still say your account is locked. So the, and then we'll reload this user. So the um, user locked at will update it to update it to 45 minutes ago and the user should still be locked even if you do it correctly. Now we will update it to one hour ago. Now, since our, our time interval here is one hour, I would expect that the user should be able to log back in. And we have, and we'll see what happens to the failed attempts now. Black that becomes nil and failed. Attempts get set back to zero. So um, the other way that we need to do this is we'll, we'll set it to um, to nine here. Just so we can get back to our locked state. other method of getting an unlock here is that you um, this should be sending a, an email and you can see here your account has been locked due to an excessive number of unsuccessful sign-in attempts um, and then you should be able to test this so first we'll do it with an invalid unlock token and then uh, prevented this from being saved and then we've got similar to the recent confirmation instructions you have the ability to resend unlock instructions so we'll do that this should send another email the token let's see here GX E7 yeah when you do that it does change the the token here so if we go back and do this one it's not gonna let us do it we have to use the new one here and now your account has been unlocked successfully. Please sign in to continue and we can log in. We have signed in successfully and we can log out. So that's the functionality that we're testing here. I will now go in and we'll create a test class here in Uh, our de system device folder here. So we're doing um, browser driven tests, essentially testing just what we did with the full JavaScript 
uh, framework and everything turbo and the whole stack, including the front end, um, so that we ensure that this is working with a real user with a real browser. So create a new file here called lock and unlock test dot rb and uh, I'll populate the initial state of this um, with the, um, the the tests that we were just talking about all stubbed out and then we'll take a look at it. All right so we've created our test class here lock and unlock test um, got our documentation comment right now we've got our just our user here, we'll update that later um, to set the failed attempts to whatever we want as a default. We'll probably set it to nine up here in the setup block and then set it to eight to test this one attempt left scenario. And then we're going to, so we'll test that um, scenario that it locks with, warns with one attempt left, uh, locks after failed attempts reached, um, all the other ones will essentially piggyback off of and presuppose the, the failed attempts reached situation. And then we've got user can unlock account via emailed token. Uh, user account unlocks after specified time elapses. Uh, user can cannot unlock with an invalid token uh, and can resend it. And then user can resend unlock instructions and unlock. So we will start with the, uh, the setup block uh, and then we'll uh, also do the um, the one failed attempt test the first iteration of trying to get that one implemented. All right, so I've got the um, the one failed attempt left test here. So we've got um, the user. Oh, I need to update that user down to eight, or our test will fail. So this is the first situation. So this is testing that we get uh, to one failed attempt left and um, that we're still on the login page. So we'll try running that. Did we save our class? Lock and unlock test. There we go. Give it a shot. All right, so that's succeeded. We'll now uh, proceed and uh, implement the locks after failed attempts reach method here. All right, so we've got now the situation where lock locks after failed attempts reached so we're going to attempt to log in with a bad password uh, we should ass assert that your account is locked as the test text there um, we'll still be on the login page otherwise uh, and we also want to check now that you can't log in even with valid credentials so you try to log in and it asserts your account is locked and then we redo the login page assertions so we'll try rerunning our test class here. Let's see how it goes. So that succeeded. And then all of our other tests are going to presuppose that this um, occurs. So we're going to create a um, helper method here.
block account and demonstrate behavior. And it's going to be just this whole block of text. And then our test becomes a one liner where it calls that method. Oh, not with. There we go. So let's make sure I did that correctly. Rerun it. Still good. All right. So now we'll uh, pause and implement the next. Um, use case, which is the ability to unlock via an email token. All right, so we've got the, uh, the situation here now where the uh, we do the same thing we did last time, lock account and demonstrate behavior. Then we'll visit the user unlock path with the unlock token, assert your account has been successful, unlocked successfully, please sign in to continue, log in, and then assert the um, successful attributes of a login. So we'll try running that. Uh, it's possible that this unlock token is a digest. So um, if that's the case, we'll have to use the similar thing to what we did with the reset password test where we get it from uh, the last delivered email. So we'll attempt this. See how it goes. All right, so we've got a failure. Unlock token is invalid. So that looks like we will have that similar situation there. So um, what I'm going to do is in this demonstrate behavior method here, uh, I'm going to get some information about that last email. Uh, including the, uh, the harvesting the token from it, but we'll also assert that the user's um, uh, locked at is not n not nil, um, and then a couple other things there. So we'll uh, we'll do that and then um, apply it to this uh, this test to change the um, unlock token information. All right, so I've got another iteration of this ready to go. So uh, visit the user unlock path with the um, an unlock token here. So going back to the uh, lock account and demonstrate behavior now, we're going to uh, make some assertions about the previous state before we lock the account that the um, locked at and unlock token are uh, not nil uh, or, or that they are nil to start off. Um, and then we'll do that last failed attempt, assert that the account is locked, reload the user, and then we'll assert that the, um, the user locked at is not nil, that the unlocked token is not nil. We're going to assert that an email has been delivered. And then we want to also um, uh, get that unlock email and uh, get the token from it get the reset password token attribute, make that our unlock token. Um, and then um, we attempt to log in and get all the account is locked stuff still. So we'll try running that, see whether I created any new problems with this or whether I made the test pass. Okay. We had two failures. So on the locks after failed attempts, uh, looks like we're failing on line 75 here, which is the emails. So it looks like it sent two emails instead of one in that scenario. Um, so 
that's line 23, and then in line 27, uh, where, let's see here, unlock token can't be blank. So maybe we're sending um, more than one email here. Let's uh, throw in a debugger statement here, right? after this and then go to our browser test driver we'll use um, Chrome instead of headless Chrome here Should we save this? You have it saved. And then we want to run. Our test here. Take a look at what's going on. Okay, our account is locked. I think we're frozen now. So let's take a look at our let's find out how many deliveries we've got here. Mail dot body. Users unlock unlock token equals. There's only one email here, which is what we'd expect. Let's see what happens when we run. Our attempt to get the unlock token here. We called it email. Nil. Email dot body dot raw source. Oh, that's because we set it to length instead of last. Nil. Reset. Password token. Is that the local host unlock unlock token? That's the um, the problem there. No, I had unlocked. That makes me sad. All right, so let's get rid of the debugger, finish this off. All right, we still got a failure here on can unlock account via emailed token. We're getting two emails there on line 75. And it's 
specifically for 27 here. redo a debugger statement here. I'm not going to really look at the browser. I'm just going to look at the console. All right. Only got one. Let's just get rid of the assert emails. It doesn't seem to work nicely with uh, application system test cases, which might maybe why they um, by default removed the inclusion of that module. All right, so that's passing. By implication, we are sending an email if we can get the um, the correct information from the last email and um, and all that stuff. So that's fine. Um, so I think we're good there. Let me try just rerunning the whole suite. All right, so we've got our our unlock token and all that stuff. We will um, take a look at the um, the next scenario there, and then um, try that out. All right, so our next test here, we're going to use the um, the Rails test time helper here, travel, after we unlock to move forward in the future one hour. And then we should be able to log in with the user and assert that the user has been signed in successfully. As you can see, there's some uh, repeated code here that we'll wind up refactoring out once we get all of our um, base test methods here passing. Or actually, I'll, I'll probably do it after we get this one passing. But try scenario and we succeeded so now you can see here um, Thing called unlocked login behavior and it will have this here Place that there and replace that there. All right, rerun the test. Right, so we have now uh, user cannot unlock with an invalid token and can resend.
So we'll do that one next. Yeah, we'll implement it and there's probably some common functionality between the unlock one we have up here and what we do there that we'll refactor out afterwards. All right, so we've implemented this unlock with invalid token and can resend method. Uh, there's a lot going on here, so let's talk through it. So similar to before uh, in the um, ability to unlock via emailed token, we do the lock account and demonstrate behavior. In this case, instead of visiting the user unlock path with the correct token, we're going to visit it with the bad token. And then we're going to assert that the text is unlocked token is invalid. Um, these are assertions about the, um, the resend unlock instructions page here, uh, which we'll wind up refactoring out into a, uh, a method once we get this passing. Uh, then we'll fill in the email with the user's email, uh, which reminds me that we need to um, note here And I might want to change that behavior later. There, there's a, uh, if you look in the um, device um, things here, there's a paranoid instructions uh, for both passwords and unlocks. I might wind up uh, going that route um, later in the backlog. I'm not going to do it right this minute, but um, that's going to be um, maybe something we add to the backlog here. So uh, back in our test method here. So. Uh, we're going to get the, there should be a new unlock email uh, sent. We get the new unlock token from that. We should assert that these have, the previous and new unlock tokens have changed. Uh, and then we visit with the new unlock token, assert that the account has been unlocked successfully, and then do the unlock login behavior. So let's give this a shot. So we've got two failures now. Line 40 and line 50. Why did line 40 fail? So we're traveling one hour. I don't know if I can do that. Let's see if that run it with the same seed. So we're down to one failure. That seemed to work. And so here the, um, the unlock tokens are not changing. So we'll just um, we'll still get it from there. But we just won't make assertions about it. Rerun. 
run the tests. We're still failing here. Unlock token is invalid. Let's run a user reload here. See if that gives us enough time to still failing. Unlock token, but it's failing on line 76 here. No, it's failing on, yeah, line 76. Unlock token is invalid. Maybe that's our problem there. I don't know how, let's get into the debugger. And look specifically at line 50 here. test okay it's only one delivery here click on resend unlock instructions so we are doing that and then we're not sending another email from what I can tell See if sleeping a second will help us. That might be a millisecond, actually. Now we've got another delivery. And that might be our might be what we need see if that gets us passing It does get us passing. And I think we can now re 
do that assertion about the unlock token changing assuming we So yeah, that was the correct behavior that that token does change. We just needed to allow for it to have enough time to do this. So um, the next one is gonna be just user can resend unlock instructions and unlock. Uh, we'll implement that and then we'll refactor out some common code between these three methods. Uh, pause and do that. All right, so here is the, um, the unlock instructions without the um, the issue with the invalid token. So it's gonna be very similar uh, to the point where we'll definitely wanna refactor all this out. So you click on, um, after the lock, you click on didn't receive unlock instructions from the login page, is, which is where you are. Then you make all the exact same assertions, fill in with the user e email, click on resend unlock instructions, and then um, it's going to be um, the exact same from there on out. So we will rerun. Oh, I need to, I'm not specify just one line number here. All right, so that is successful. Now let's um, get this uh, duplicated code starting from here. Call it resend and unlock. unlock with resend, I'd already spec'd out the method there. So all of this is going to be moved into this method here, and we're going to further refactor this out when we do our next test about the um, the bad email situation, or yeah, the, the bad email situation. So that all becomes unlock with resend, and then the rest of this all becomes Unlock with resend. Let's see if I manage to not break anything or everything. And then this unlock with resend, we're gonna want to refactor out further. this we'll move into 
this method that we can reuse for our bad email situation and we would call this here and let's see if we can just knock out this situation now so similar here and then in this case we're going to call just the assertions and setup part of this and then we're going to fill in email bogus.email at example.com and then we will assert the text I'll just pause and do the rest of this method find that correct label all right, so we've got our error scenario here. We will attempt to run all of our tests, hopefully with no skips and all passing. Oh, so close. So we failed this test. Uh, click on. I need to click on the button to resend unlock instructions. Just run line 70. That passes, our whole class should now be passing. While we're waiting, I would, our retro episode will be the next episode. I, um, I think it'll be one of our most fun if not the most fun retro we've done so far just that i'm excited about the um, interplay between the functionality we're doing the theme on the retro board with the gifs and the, the song i'll be doing with mediocre karaoke um, so our tests are all passing let's see what the authorities think about us so Okay, that's correctable. Uh, ABC size too high and too many lines on the same item there. So that looks like some opportunity to refactor. Should be down to two now. We are. And it's the lock account and demonstrate behavior. So I think the Uh, 
guess the best way to do this would be to all this stuff about the user and the token with the emails would be what I would um, refactor out here. Everything from here, user reload to here, I would put in this method. back in, ensure that, we'll see if Rubicop has been satisfied with that. Rubicop is satisfied. Let's see if our tests pass. All right, so take a look at our Git. It's only this one item here that we've added. We'll write a commit message on this, and then I'll go and do a separate commit where we uh, take a look at the commenting for the epic. So pause and write my commit message. All right, I've got my commit message for this commit that implements the functionality. We'll save it, close our stuff, and now I'm going to let's make sure that our git tree here is um, clean. I'll push what we've got to the remote and let that. Um, that build run, but while that's happening, I'm gonna now take a look at all the um, all the stuff we've done in this epic and um, take a um, just touch up and make sure everything is well commented and everything there. Uh, so the the way you can go about doing this is get diff main, and it will kind of take you through everything that you've done that's um, different. You can, I think, also do a, an LS files on that as well. But um, essentially, everything in our um, device um, stuff there, the uh, controllers that we created and all that. Uh, so it's uh, going to be a bit of a chore, so I'm not going to like screencast this all happening. But I'll um, take a look at it, and we'll be in its own commit. Um, and I'll bring it back, bring the video back when I've got the commit message ready to go. All right, so I've got my comments done. If we do a git status here, you can see that I modified a bunch of files. Um, there are a couple things, like for the most part, this is just a chore that I did, and you can go look at the commit on GitHub to find out the exact comments that I did here. Um, there are a couple of things of note that I did that I'd like to call out. So first in Rubocop YAML, um, I got rid of the exclude on the um, documentation comment uh, cop there. So um, application app helpers and app controllers, I went in and did documentation comments on all of those and uh, got rid of the exclude on that. And then in the tests we did this video for lock and unlock, um, 
I realized that I was sleeping too long here, so a tenth of a second is more than enough time for the for everything to catch up. I ran this a bunch of times and uh, it never failed. So um, rather than sleeping a whole second, I modified that down to a tenth of a second. Everything else is just adding comments, talking about what the methods do, their side effects. So here's an example of one of the classes with all the comments added in. Uh, for those helper methods that go through a bunch of steps, I kind of bulleted out the things that are done. Um, I think that, uh, especially in, in a situation where this is intended to be instructional videos, um, adding some additional comments there, I think was worthwhile. It was um, a lot of real life time, but um, just a few seconds for the past uh, for you as the video watcher and hopefully it's beneficial for you. Uh, so we're now to the point where we can add um, the whole directory here and um, I will write my commit message for the uh, documentation comment and everything. Um, I'll pause it afterwards and hopefully we'll get the pull request merged and be able to close out this epic. All right, so I've got my commit message. I will save it, commit it, make sure I didn't lose anything here. So we've got now a clean uh, one commit, uh, clean staging area and uh, working area and one commit ahead of uh, the epic branch we can now take a look at our edit our subtasks to indicate that they're done we can move error handling to done here use move user unlocking and locking to done here and then while our build is running here we can go to the code here compare pull request into main I'll write a I'll pause and write a um, information about the uh, the pull request and um, then we'll go from there all right I've got my pull request ready to go check on in our action make sure everything's green Make sure the last commit is green, including all the checks. All good. Let's take a look at our pull request. In this case, because it's so big, I'm going to um, Actually, yeah, I'll just still um, merge it from the, the command line. So we haven't had any, um, any further commits to main since we started this epic. So I can just here go git checkout main git fetch and then merge, get push, pull request has been successfully merged and closed, go to our issue, we will 
mark our issue done referencing our pull requests which is Resolved by number 17. All right, so our issue is closed, which I think moves it to done in our In our backlog, we are done with this epic. Let's take a look just real quick, finally, at coverall since we're on main now. Everything's looking good there. Build is passing. Let's take a look at code climate. Uh, we were able to avoid any code smell so that's uh that's encouraging we will see you in the retro exciting thanks for watching this stateless codecast be sure to like comment subscribe and spread the word you can follow us on social media at stateless code until next time keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf